Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Megan Nunez of FanDuel, who's here to break down week eight and her best pass. What's going on, Megan? Not a whole lot, just trying to find some winners for the week. Back on the grind here this weekend, trying to find the, the easiest winners, so we hope, and that begins... What a surprising spot. It's the battle over the AFC North. Two of the best teams in the NFL, the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson, taking on the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. In this one, the Ravens are four-point favorites, despite the fact the Steelers haven't lost the game yet this season. And you're riding Lamar Jackson. You're riding the Ravens in this rivalry match. A lot of R's there. Why do you like the Ravens with the points? <clears throat> okay, so yes, I'm betting against the only undefeated team in the NFL. Not only are they undefeated, but they have looked completely dominant and shown little to no flaws, except in the second half of that Titans game. And I'm thinking that may carry over this week against the Ravens. Um, I love J uh, Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh off of a bye. John Harbaugh is 9-4 and four against the spread off of a bye. Um, I think this Ravens team did need that extra week to prepare for uh, that Pittsburgh offense. And I think that the offense is actually going to pose a problem, especially Lamar Jackson for this Seattle defense, who, while have been lights out, showed that they have some weaknesses in that second half of the Titans game. So I'm going to go ahead and take the 9-4 and four against the spread uh, with Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson off of a bye, laying a four at home. And this rival, I'm going to go with the Ravens minus four. After that explosive first half, the Pittsburgh Steelers were in a shell for most of the second half, and then Big Ben tried to get it going again, and threw a couple of interceptions there. It wasn't the Big Ben we had seen the first five weeks of the NFL season or in the first five games. Now they face their arch rivals, the Baltimore Ravens, a team whose defense is just getting more ferocious, and Lamar Jackson with a week of rest. Well, it's a dangerous spot for Pittsburgh. Megan, going with the Ravens and the four points here. That Titans-Steelers game was close last week as the Titans showed that never-say-die attitude. The last few weeks, the schedule has gotten really rough for Tennessee. That changes here in week number eight, with Tennessee taking on Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Titans are six-point favorites here, finally getting a little break in the schedule. But six points is a pretty big number given how well Joe Burrow has played. Yet you're, bank you're banking on Tennessee. You're backing Ryan Tannehill. And you're taking the points here. Six-point favorites are the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, so as you brought up the, the game from last week, the Tennessee Titans, while they got absolutely dominated in the first half, really showed their grit and true colors in the second half and showed that they are really never out of a game. As you said, they do get a break in the schedule, now going to play the Bengals. And look, Joe Burrow and that offense can put up some points, but I just don't think that that team is built to play 60 minutes of football with elite quarterbacks and running backs like Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry. Um, I like the six here because you don't have to worry about that back door from Burrow. So I think the Titans get it done easy here. I like the Titans in this spot, minus the six. Riding Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill never seem like a bad idea. And as we keep saying here, Cincinnati, who's played well enough, did fall at the end of Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns last week. This week, Derrick Henry's not going to let up and, Titans a win by at least six points, according to Megan. One final game to get to, and it's the same final game we do every week, and it's Mr. Unlimited. It is Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Played a barn burner on Sunday night because there's just never a normal Seahawks game on Sunday night, falling to the Arizona Cardinals when it was all said and done in overtime. You're back here on the Seahawks this week. They are three-point favorites against the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers, who are down... Three running backs already, if not four. Um, the Seahawks down two running backs, if not three. So it's a weird situation. But Russell Wilson, the important part here, is healthy. And if Russell Wilson is healthy, the Seahawks are certainly in an advantageous position. You like Seattle, minus three this week. I do. Um, and you probably already knew that they were going to be on my card. I, I love backing the Seahawks. And it was just some weird miracle that Kyler Murray covered last week. Um, so I'm just, I went to bed with that game uh, with the Seahawks being up 10 and I woke up and almost wanted to cry, but that's neither here nor there. I'm going to go and take Russell Wilson and be super cliche and take him off that loss. They're going to be back at home at the 12th man again, 12th man list. Well, for the most part, 
And um, I I like them in this spot. He always plays really well against the 49ers. The 49ers, they went from being like bust to studs in like three weeks. Um, and look, they, they beat the Rams and they beat the Patriots, but the Patriots haven't looked great. And I don't know if I'm sold on the Rams being a great team. So look, I like Russell Wilson in this bounce back spot at home. Minus three, um, I, I, I'm rolling with Mr. Unlimited. A bounce-back performance for Russell Wilson is really what it is. He didn't have a great second half against Arizona. He needs to call that out. He was unbelievable in the first half, and that connection to Tyler Lockett was fantastic. But the second half wasn't great. Russell Wilson threw three interceptions in that game against San Francisco, a team he does play well, but a defense that knows him well. It should be another good one between Seattle and San Francisco on Sunday. Megan backing Russell Wilson and the three points for Seattle this week. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel Hurry Up. Megan, we appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend and happy Halloween. Thank you so much. Happy Halloween, Eve, 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 and Halloween in general to you as well. Tomorrow, Tom Becky will join us as we finish out his DFS card with top value plays on the slate. For Megan Nunez, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.